we we talking about content creators beefing on tour. All right, you know what I mean? That's that's how the game goes. So, all right, Funny Marco. So there was a Bobby Funny Marco tour. It's actually technically two. The first tour got canceled. Nobody really said nothing. It was just like complications. The second tour comes up. They start promoing it, doing all types of videos and stuff like that. And then everything went dark. And then Funny Marco releases this video. And in this video, he is speaking about, from his perspective, what uh, went wrong or didn't happen or happened. So let's go. Yeah, Bobby's a good person. You know, you know I, I feel I, I, like everybody good. Let's be real. Like, I don't have shit bad to say about nobody. But when people pay their hard work and money, I really, really care about that. So when I'm on stand-up tour and I'm selling out these tours and then me and Bobby be able to come together, and people are paying their money to come see us. I really want that to get better. I don't want it to be the same. I don't want to take nobody's money if you can't get it again. Let me let me start there. Let me say that. If you can't get the money again, you don't need to be doing it twice. That's like with anything. With promo, if you're doing promo, don't be out here trying to scramble for money and take people hard work money to just do it and use your platform and then go about your day because it's about long like a relationship. A relationship is very, very important. So the fact that I feel like I was, I did stand up before and I'm still doing it. So I understand I'm learning how to entertain a crowd. And it's not the same thing that you get on Instagram. This is real life where people are going to look and they want the energy and they want the feeling. And I feel like Bobby was stiff a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, hey, man, let's, let's really, really work on this. Like, and I, I paid script writers, like, let's really get him a show. And where she told me, that's not me. Bobby was like, my comedy is me not talking a lot and i'm like shit this is different like you can do that on the podcast but in real life this is different so her comedy was different from what she said from what what she wanted to bring to the show which i can respect you know what i'm saying there's not nothing about me getting mad i'm not saying you're doing nothing wrong i can't but i just don't agree with it i can feel like i don't agree with it you feel me the same way uh, may i say something real quick i'm so fucking look your generation, y'all niggas suck at communication. I don't know if y'all fell asleep in English. I don't know. Maybe y'all parents was punch you in the head or y'all was getting raped or something. The shit is annoying as fuck. Either you don't like something or you like it. Don't keep saying, yo, I like you. I'm saying, I did but you He did it twisting himself into a fucking pretzel. Hey, shit, chick. Whoever the fuck you with, bitch, call her a bitch. Hey, bitch, you're not doing your job. I don't like what you're presenting. It feels like you're ripping people off. That's what you're saying. You just said, hey, man, I'm seeing you in practice. This isn't working. It seems like you're taking people's money and you're giving them a shit product. That's what you're saying. Say that. Stand on it. Don't say what you just said and then say, I mean, I like what you're doing. I mean, I mean I'm not saying that I don't like it. I'm not. I'm just saying that. Nigga, what the fuck? This shit is annoying and you're getting on my nerves. Get to the point. Yeah. Shorty, I don't want to tour with you. You effing up. You taking people money, you're not giving them a quality product, and it's affecting my business. Because if I go on tour with you and you get that shit off, niggas ain't gonna want to come fuck with me. Guess what? I just made your statement with you, and I did it in less than thirty seconds. Go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. Nah, I feel like <clears throat> that's the that's the difference between my generation and your generation. Like y'all niggas just was high heads and just say whatever the fuck y'all want and don't have no repercussions. No, we understand the power of our words. So I get what you're saying, right? And <laughs> so, so no, nigga, not about to just get up there and just be disrespectful. Nah, so I'm letting you know that, yo, I understand, right? We're being empathetic. We're being respectful. That's not, no, it's not. It's not being respectful. You just call Shorty out for not doing her job in the most on respectful way on a public platform. You could have called her and said this. We didn't need to know that. That's a fact. You could have just you could have told her in private. So you decided to went. You nobody asked you to go. But you decided to get on a public platform. You just spent five minutes explaining how she wasn't shit and then said, I ain't trying to say you ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? We still cool. I, I'm cool with you. We all cool. It's all good. I'm just saying, I'm saying you a piece of shit, but I don't want to say you a piece of shit. That's not being empathetic or sympathetic. That's just being a bitch. Stand on your words, nigga. And if you really got a prop, if, if you really want to save the relationship, you know what you do? You go to her and you sit her down and have the hard conversation. 100%. You don't turn the camera on and 
fucking out her into the public you know what i'm saying and then like take it like that bro like no nah, that's not the way to do it you know what i mean there's a many of things that have happened in the entertainment whether it be comedy or music or whatever when niggas had to cancel some shit and niggas never spoke on it for 20 30 40 50 years a nigga died and that's when they want to come out and say some shit you know what i'm saying like that's a fact this turn your auto focus off man Oh yeah, I don't. I, I'll I'll do that after the show. My Nick. bad, but like, yeah, and it's my fault because I'm fucking wilding right Are now. Are you telling me you if you you gonna get up there and you gonna be like, yeah, man, I had to cancel the show because this nigga a piece of shit. He wasn't really selling tickets like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that just because. I mean, people will look at that and and then think like, oh, he you. can't you can't work with this nigga. Oh, he's you know I mean he gonna put him out this that and the third. Um. I just look at it like this as well, and this is gonna sound very like plain and simple, but you know, Funny Marco is black, and and Bobby Althoff is white, in like <laughs> the most black and white way. So for them to even come together to me, I didn't see how that was going to necessarily work. I feel like she has a very different type of crowd, but she was like trying to you know tap in with the black crowd when she like the Offset interview. That shit was going crazy. I've done stand up with Funny Marco before, like when he first first started. It's like nigga 2018 and i mean you definitely could tell that he still has some work to do but i also think with him being around stand-up comedians they're teaching him the game they're helping mm -hmm. him out with his shit. does bobby have somebody in her corner that's doing that for her probably not when you do stand up though you have to talk like i don't understand that whole concept anyway she's gonna get up there and tell jokes but it would just be kind of like you can have dry humor like a Will Ferrell, but even Will Ferrell still talks. You just have to to talk. So I I don't see how that shit was going to work. I know she responded back and made a video of her own um, about how Marco was, I guess, ignoring her and shit. We got that video. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we got it. Yes, sir. I have it on deck. Let's go. Video. Not gonna lie, I was a little shocked. So here's my my version of what happened last year. We were supposed to go on tour. And I backed out last minute because my husband had just left me. I just had surgery and I was super nervous going into this because I was not prepared. And I text Marco and I said, Marco, I'm so sorry to do this, but I am so depressed right now. I literally want it myself. He doesn't reply to me. And then he unfollows me. I woke up from surgery actually to him unfollowing me. And not only that, in the coming weeks, he would go on multiple podcasts and talk about how much he didn't fuck with my style of humor. Fast forward some time, I'm in Vegas doing an interview and he bumps into me and I'm like, oh, hey, stranger. He's like, let's go on tour again. I'm like, all right, fine, let's do it. Like, during this tour, I'm trying my best. Every time I'm telling him, like, Marco, he's like, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm like, Marco, I'm trying my best, but like, it's hard for me to get out of my comfort zone of like, I have social anxiety, like debilitating social anxiety. That's why this whole thing of me, it's not fully a character. I actually am socially awkward, I'm socially awkward. It's embarrassing. I don't want to be. So I lean into it and I am doing my best on this stage. Our last show, I try my best to get out of my comfort zone. I drink a little and I thought it went so well. I thought it went so well. I was like, Marco, I actually, I did everything you said and like I actually felt really good about it I felt like I really got out of my comfort zone I really felt good about it and he's like yeah you killed it it was great fast forward a couple more weeks and I hear from my team that he canceled it and I'm like what the hell Marco canceled the show like why they're like I don't know so I'm like calling him calling him calling him doesn't answer me I'm like okay congratulations on the baby doesn't answer me he just won't answer me but then he's tagging me in post to Taylor Swift dancing and being like that's Bobby and I'm like okay at least we're still cool Fast forward to today, and I get tagged in a video of Marco standing by a pool talking to everybody about why he canceled the tour. I don't know. I don't know anything. Anyway, with all of that said, I'm going to go on my own tour since you don't want to go on tour with me anymore. And it's going to be funny. It's going to be great. Yo. Why is she standing so close to the edge of the pool? Because she about to jump off that motherfucker. <laughs> what? Nah, but all right, seriously. All right. So to I wanna I wanna go through the, the conversations real quick. So what Jay was saying, I do um I, I understand what you're saying, but again, we're not in that time where you could just come out and 
and be disrespectful, right? Because it doesn't look good for you, one. But two, at the end of the day, I don't think it was a good move to come out in in, in public in general. Like, we didn't even know that. I know I didn't even know that y'all was on tour, one. No, it was canceled or you had an issue. We would have, and this, this is for everybody. Like, bro, a lot of times your problems is bigger to you than they are to the world. So the moment you mm. put them out, you introducing more people to your business than you need to, one, right? Two, mm -hmm. I feel like, yo, after hearing Bobby's, and I believe her, it ain't about a black or white thing. It's like, bro, you could have called this chick. We don't need to know this. Like, this is that industry shit we be talking about. You did this for clicks. You made sure you had your little, your professional videographer where they could zoom in and out, how they do your show and all that. You feel me? You made sure you buy a pool. You made sure the aesthetic was right. It didn't even make sense. It looked like, yo, I want some attention. That's what it looked like. It's like, bro, like y'all niggas, man, you got too much clout for this. You don't need no more clout, bro. You know, you good. You ain't got to do this. So when I hear Bobby come out to say, yo, like, I ain't even know. And then to Nick's point, right? This is what I don't understand about these celebrities. Who do you niggas think y'all are, man? Because uh -oh. it was a point. It was a point where you wasn't the best stand-up comedian. It was a point where, bro, we already know. We know. Come on. Oh, this shit gets me so frustrated, bro. Because niggas right. be so, like, niggas can't see past their nose. Like, that's only only thing they can see is themselves, and they be so selfish. It's like, yo, who do you niggas think you are? It was a time where niggas thought you were just an Instagram comedian as well. It was a time. But now, all of a sudden, somebody else need help. You don't want to pull her up like somebody pulled you up. You being corny. That shit is whack. I don't give a fuck how many followers you got, how much money you making. Niggas need to tell you that. And for you to go on, on camera and say this about especially a woman, you niggas is corny. That shit is whack. So, like, I don't be understanding this. Like, and it's a lot of niggas I wish I could say something about for real because, like, men, where I come from, bro, like you were saying, Jay, outside of just the, the, the ignorant statements or whatever, bro, we confront things. That's a part of being a man, bro. If I got a problem, I say something to you and I allow you to respond how you, however you want to respond. And then your response dictates how we move forward. Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. Yo, you had a problem, you should have called her. You should have been like, yo, this isn't da 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 da. So even in the video, you could have been like, yo, I spoke to her. I tried to speak to her, but you know, she ain't answered. Well, come to find out, she 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 go live and say, yo, it was a time where I was really fucked up. I was really mm -hmm. fucked up, and I reached out to you and I said, yo, I can't go on a tour. You ain't even respond. Now you look ten times worse. A lot of you niggas be trying to like throw stones and hide your hand, man. That shit corny. I don't fuck with none of that. If you're gonna mm -hmm. do something, do it and stand on it. Don't come out mm. on some half-ass story bullshit like nah, like man, that shit is whack, bro. And what and it makes it worse because she is white. It makes it worse. Cause now what you you want us to decide with you? No, I'm not siding with you because you black nigga. No, do the right thing. Yo, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna respond. Uh, you know what I mean? Shout out to my guy Raw Dope in the in the comments. He said you mad at Marco for leaning on that white girl. That's crazy. No, let's 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 clarify what was just said. I'm upset because Marco made a video, period. Like, let's move the white part out of it. Let's move race out of it. Let's just say, yo, leaning on a white girl or talking publicly about some business, some back-end business, that's back-end business. It shouldn't be said. It shouldn't have been a conversation. It wasn't needed. You could have just canceled the tour. You could have put out a little statement and said, due to, you know, hey, there was some issues going on. Unfortunately, the tour won't go on. That's it. That was she didn't violate that nigga. She ain't put her hands on a nigga. She ain't steal no money from that nigga. It ain't necessary as a man. It just don't look bad. Whether it's you talking to a white girl or a black girl, yo, coming out and going aggressive at somebody completely unnecessary. You know what I mean? Number two, the issues that that he admitted to and that she admitted to. Guess what? Marco, if you were the person that came up with the idea of the tour, why didn't you personally take the time to sit down with her and craft what would what the show would look like before y'all made announcements? All of these things about I didn't like the way she was handling this and that, nah, 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 nah. like you should have figured all of this stuff out before the first flyer was posted, now, before the first public mention. Go ahead. If they if they went on tour the first time, I feel like you kind of had an understanding of what it looked like. But they didn't go on tour. They, they made an announcement. It oh, they yeah, canceled. They it. got canceled before they did. Well, well, way, you, you, you've been around. Y'all been around each other. Y'all done did interviews together. So like, you understand the type of person that she is. Now maybe you thought she was just going. But you know, you yeah. know that there's a difference between talking on a microphone in, in a in a studio and going in front of a crowd of people. That's a two completely different things. Yeah, no. I feel like both saying. of the both of the stories don't make sense to me because even Bobby, let's get to her. She's like, yo, yeah, um, I hit you. 
when my, my man left me, my husband was leaving me. I was on a hospital mm -hmm. bed. I woke up to you on follow me. And I and, and I seen you uh going to um to uh to YouTube or having podcasts saying that you didn't fuck with my style of of, of comedy. That mm -hmm. don't even make sense for all that to happen, and then for him to ask you to do another tour and you to say yes. None of that makes sense. None of it mm -hmm. makes sense to me. So it ain't just like both of them just it, it looks conflicted like some some things are missing like maybe they mm -hmm. fucked and they just trying to like not get down to the nitty gritty because like that's the only thing i can think of like because when you but do you something know, and you try not to put everything out there you try to put pieces out there it only make it more confusing but you know how that shit is though like when you you have like an awkward fallout with somebody and then you run into them again and then you just say some shit to kind of just like glaze it over. So it could have been like, yo, I canceled the tour the first time. I ran into <laughs> you. And then it's like, hey, let's go on tour again. Let's let's, let's do it again. But, just but to, to say to... yes to agree to it, you could you could be like, usually, Nick, I'm following you, right? If that mm -hmm. was to happen, what we do as as black people, right? It ain't the best, but we we we, we always be like, all right, bet, like let's 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 make it work. Let's let's make it make as long as it makes sense, right? In, in person. And then as soon as they text you, be like, you probably ignore them, right? Like I get the awkward interaction when you face to face. I get that. I ain't. I'm not saying that that's, not, that's wrong, but come on. Like, if it was that bad, you'd be like, all right, bet, you brush them off. And then when they hit you, like, uh, yeah, I got something something happened, da da da. I guess, man. I, I ran it, when we was on tour, like I said, that was a, a little while ago. But like, me and Mark was following each other. There's no problem, no nothing. Then I ran into him again. Like, I noticed he had done following me. I ran into him again at Uptown Comedy Corner. And, um, he was like, bro, you need to be on your own tour, bro. You funny as shit, da 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 da. He's like, um, he's like, I follow you, right? And I was like, um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't think you do. Da, da, da. So he followed me right then and there again type shit. And like, nigga, I got the whole thread so I can see all this shit, right? Nigga, maybe like two months go by, this nigga unfollows again. Yeah. It just be like, I don't know what niggas be on, bro. That's what I'm saying. That whole awkward thing when you run into somebody, you know, you like, oh, I'm going to follow this nigga. Oh, let me follow this nigga back type shit. Like, bro. And it's like, bro, I... That's just one person, bro. I, I'm not your style. That's cool for whatever reason. But to me, niggas do that. Niggas, niggas do that, bro. I don't know. Niggas have done that to me my whole career. They follow you when they need something. And then when they don't need you no more, they unfollow you, act like they don't know you. That's just the game, bro. Like that's the, and, and I don't get caught up in that because I don't even be looking at niggas' profiles to see if niggas is following me or not. Man, these uh, niggas be fucking homeless on the way up so they do anything to get shelter and, and get support. Bro, man, Jesus hold up. Is today. This is crazy. Nah, bro, because I witnessed it. I ain't going to say no names, bro. I remember Don't a big-ass comedian, right? We was like Look. this. We was like this, bro. He was calling me my brother. I can't wait for you to move to the A and everything. I'm helping him with his shows and everything. Nigga get 5 million followers. Then they just go and start going down. I can't even get a, a text back, bro. We When, when you come to Baltimore, you need somewhere to stay. You need a ride. Oh, I'm there. I got you. I'm How there. Many you said 5 million, you right? You got more than that now, but I'm just saying I'm there. But as soon as the clock gets to happen and you don't need no help no more, it's like, nah. oh, who you? Man, suck yeah. my dick. Like, that's why, bro. That's why when you were saying it, nigga, I understand, bro. But what happened yeah. is when niggas need some help and they think you beneficial on that way up, oh yeah, come here. Come here. They, they take you by the wing, right? But as soon as they don't need your help no more, it's like they get amnesia. And then not even amnesia. Because I respect a nigga that just be like, yo, you right, bro. My bad, man. I had to do that wrong. Because it don't be amnesia. Because what happened is when they respond to a message, they try to act like nothing ain't nothing happened or like it's all good. It's regular. No, nigga, you whack. And that's for <laughs> anybody. That's, like I got, I done had so many encounters with different niggas in the media like that, man. You niggas aren't men. And ain't, my problem ain't with funny Marco at all. It's the fact that I see another man acting on some corny shit in public, period. It's the fact that it's a nigga on some corny shit. Because you niggas be corny. And then you get more cornier when a nigga call you out. That's why I don't fuck with these niggas, bro. And that's why I speak on it all the time. Niggas say I'm crazy. Nah, because you niggas are pussy. And the, mo and the moment somebody call you out, it's like, yo, he, he, he's difficult. He's hard to work with. No, you just a bitch. And I'm not going to let you be a bitch in my presence. You pussy. I don't know. Like, yo, niggas be like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, no, like, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to get. I didn't mean to get so upset. What happened? Did somebody disrespect you or not? Nah, it's bro. Niggas just it's funny. Weird, this, nigga, bro. this nigga just said, "Yo, y'all older niggas, man. Y'all be don't want to call niggas out, and call them a bitch. You can't do that, man. We know how to be respectful. This nigga right here. This nigga acting crazy. I'm gonna fuck your ass out. Like, nah, I'm, just, oh, I'm just. I mean, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but like, 
No, nah, but I feel you 100 percent though. Like I'm what you're saying is no. Nah, what you're saying is 100 percent true, bro. Yo, I mean, if you want to fight somebody, I'm with you. Yo, no, WWF. Let's go, yo. Like, I'm joking. I'm joking, but I'm serious. I just feel like like niggas really like. I didn't seen it so many times, bro. And even recently, like even that's why I'm like, bro, men, bro, like if we do, I don't know. Maybe you know what? Let me let me let me dial back. Everybody don't deserve a response. I understand that. But don't make me feel like I'm somebody special who would deserve a response. Like if I'm just a business partner or if I'm just an associate, I'm just that. Don't call me your friend. Ain't no need to be like, nah, fuck with that nigga. Don't do that. Because if you say you fuck with me, I'm a, I'm, I'm going to automatically assume that if we was to ever get into any sticky, sticky situation, I deserve a conversation because you say you fuck with me. Now, at, uh, again, we talk about the new school and the old school. We talk about boundaries and we talk about like, I don't know, all the other shit that we came up with. I understand that. So you might be, you might just work with somebody and know they don't deserve a response from you. No, they don't deserve an explanation from you. No, I get that. But the moment you be like, nah, that's my brother. I, I fuck with you. I think at least you can do is have a, have a conversation with somebody. That's the least you can do. That's just my opinion, but whatever. I, I, I would say this. There are times, uh, cause, uh, there are time and place for everything. And sometimes that person may not be prepared to have the conversation that you about to have with them. So like you can have a conversation with the nigga and that nigga won't understand nothing you saying, or they just in a certain mental space. So like, sometimes it and might just take time. That's not an excuse. Bro, bro. If I do something to rub you wrong. Right. And you just, uh -huh. let's say me and you, we all three got this show. Mm -hmm. I do something to rub you on. I say something, whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. Right. And mm -hmm. then you just go MIA from today on forward, but you don't hit me and say, yo, mm -hmm. I ain't really like that. You don't say nothing. You just go ghost. That's some whole shit. Mm -hmm. That's whole shit. Ain't no excuses for it. Ain't no, I wasn't ready for the conversation. That's whole shit. You got to be a man and deal with what's uncomfortable. That's what men do. I, I, that's whole shit. If even if I you. That's not always whole shit, bro. That's not well, always you whole shit. that whole shit. I'm sorry. If, if, that shit is whole shit. It's if 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 you violate a a, a a respect boundary between two people or no, whatever. We're not happened. talking about two people. We are talking about us three right here. If, if I violate if, you with our relationship right now, if you violate us between our relationship, oh, I'm coming to see your ass. But that's because, but that's different. I'm not, not trying to hear the excuse. I just said that. I said right. some people. Right. I said right. this, Jay. Let me clarify the difference. I've known you close to 10 years now. So I'm coming to see you, Jack, because I, you know my mom, you know my dad, okay. you've been around my family. Nick. Right. Mr. Bankshot. This going to disappear? I can't be mad That's at that. That's bullshit That's because we, we, we clearly set an expectation and a, and a realm for our friendship. That's how I'm looking mm -hmm. at it. And if, and, mm -hmm. and if y'all disagree, it's okay. I'm, not, I, I'm okay with living on this hill for me. If we set an expectation of our friendship, right? Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. we outside of work, mm -hmm. I expect communication if something is misconstrued or or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's my expectation mm -hmm. as a friend. So if so, if mm -hmm. you can't do that, let me make this public right now. And then I'll post this shit on my Instagram. If you can't do that, if you can't communicate your dislikes or anything that Problems. go wrong, right? And I, between our relationship and you call us friends, don't mm -hmm. fuck with me or don't call me a friend. I'm just an associate, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But what if? I communicate to you, like say if you and I have a disagreement, we communicate, you don't seem to understand what I'm saying. So what I'm supposed to do then? A disagree that's listen, a disagreement. That's what I'm saying. It's a dis it's just a disagreement. And what I'm saying, you don't seem to get. That's cool. So what do, Wait, what I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm not oh, okay. speaking about that. I'm speaking in the instance that from that situation, if we have a disagreement, right? Yeah, we have you a just disagreement. Go ghost. I talk to you about it. I just go completely. You just go, that's Okay, okay, yeah, that, that's that, what I'm that, saying. Uh, right, right. But then I'm gonna go and eat add, add another layer. I'm adding a, another layer. Mm -hmm. If we call each other friends, though, if mm -hmm. we call each other big bro, little bro, if we call each other mentors, mentee, if we if we have a relationship outside of work, I'm mm -hmm. being fair, I'm being more than fair. If it's just work and we just, just work together and I do something, and even that, mm -hmm. I think it deserves a conversation, even work, even work. Mm -hmm. It deserves a conversation. If I do something to rub you wrong and we have a relationship, I feel like a conversation should be should be had. And if you can't have a, a conversation, you are a coward. But everybody's not good with handling confrontation. You're making excuses for cowards. I'm not making excuses. Stop. Stop it. 
Stop it. <laughs> Some people are not good, especially with strong personalities such as yourself. This is an issue I've had to deal with my whole entire life. I'm a large black dude. When I step into a room, no matter how nice I am, I can still be perceived as an aggressive person. So people that have a disagreement or they'll dislike something I said or did. And instead of them communicating to that me in person, niggas will just not communicate and then go tell you know someone. You know who yeah. we give okay for to do that? You know who we give okay for to do that? Women. Woman. That's it. That's it. Woman. Woman can say, you know what? I felt uncomfortable in a, in a situation. I didn't want to say anything because I was scared. I get that. But as a man, if I pose no threat to you, bro, none, no threat to you at all, and we just mm -hmm. had a falling out, but we mm -hmm. have a relationship. The mm -hmm. least, I'm, am I bugging? Please, people on the internet. I'm, me not not bugging. I'm just explaining to you why it doesn't always work out. And this person in the comments, E Man2262, said, I saw a video. They said people don't like to be con confrontational because they don't want to burn the bridge in the industry. Yes, some people will disappear because it's more important for them to maintain the relationship and then hopefully deal with it later on than deal with it in a moment. Maybe both of y'all are hotheads and then it might turn into a fight. Now niggas ain't even fucking with each other and can't. And that's the problem with them. this. Ugh. That's, that's the problem, the problem with, the with this internet stuff, bro. Right. Bro, you would rather be fake to maintain a relationship that don't exist just to get ahead with your career. I don't think mm -hmm. that's necessarily fake, though. Because it, it also could just be I know I know how you are, and now I'm just treating you in that space of how I know how you are. And so I you can't tell me. That. So you can't tell me. Like I don't. Maybe uh, I. Maybe no, I'm. You, no, you, I can much. tell you. Like no. Okay, let's say I do tell you. And like Jay was saying, you respond in a way it was like, oh, okay, that's not what I expected or wanted him to say. So there at that point, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, cool. All right. But that's but what you just said, though. You said, I that's tell you. Because you still had the conversation. Right, so yeah, you still had the conversation. I'm okay. saying to go yeah. ghost. To go ghost. To go ghost yeah, no. is, is weird no. energy. I think, you, I think you should say something for sure. If y'all friends, like you said. But if not, yeah, if, you're friends, right, if you're not friends and it's just business, going ghost is just a part of the... And it's still not right. Am I saying this is right? No. Am I saying that it's a reality and I've become accustomed to people doing that? I get it. You know what I'm saying? Am I going to call a nigga completely pussy for that? I'm so, Again, I'm just a little aggressive in my words. I apologize. All I'm saying is this internet stuff, bro, this internet and this clout, Bro, it turned people into like robots or something. Like it just turned people into to go people with no souls. Cause like they're willing to do anything, to, like anything. They will use you, right? Until you can't be used no more, and then move on. And what mm -hmm. happened is you use the wrong person. And this is for all my young entrepreneurs out there who or young creatives or anything. Cause I had to learn this, and I'm still learning this, as you can see in the passion. Mm -hmm. Don't allow somebody to use you, and then trick you out your spot. What I mean by that is. These people, these upper echelon people, right, with a lot of clout, they use the small people that's on their way up. They use their ideas. They use their creative direction. They use their mm -hmm. jokes. They use them until they can't be used anymore. And then what happened is once the small person notice they're being used, they say something, they speak out, it might look like anger. And then now the, the, the person that's higher than them will point the finger and say, oh, he, he's hard to work with. Oh, he got an attitude problem. He's angry. He is aggressive. No, but they don't never show the flaws that they put. And this is why I love the space that I operate in. This is why I love the space that I operate in, because none of you niggas can do that to me. I've proven that. They tried to do that. And every time I call somebody out, what they do, they point the finger at me. And yeah, as a man, I'm going to own my I'm gonna own my shit. But I know in a lot of them situations, I was mistreated and I was treated unfairly. And, and what I do, I just responded in the wrong manner for them. But now guess what? The rabbit got the gun because it's my shit now. And that's the problem. A lot of people don't own their shit. So what happens is they get used by these big people, these big corporations. And then when they can't be used no more, they left off the dry. That shit is whack. And that's why I say I represent these people, no matter how big my platform get. Because you like you don't do that, bro. That's in the industry and in real life. That's how niggas get killed. Like, but it's no real rep like reparations or um. I don't know. It's, it's no more. It's Rip no real consequences. Yeah, there's no real consequences in this space. It's no consequences. So I can do whatever I want to whoever I want and get by and I can be on top. And, and that's what happened to niggas like Diddy, to niggas like R. Kelly, because they can do whatever they want to get on top. And then it don't come out until 20, 30 years down the line. That's what happened in the streets. It don't work like that. I know I'm not in the streets. I know I never like, but that's where I came from. So I knew that. I couldn't move in a certain way in my environment because it will go down. If you act Different if you act 
a certain way in the hood, you can lose your life. But in the industry, is no real consequences. Nothing. I I get canceled for a second, I come back. It's no consequences for these niggas, man. And I, I get so frustrated and tired of seeing niggas move like that. I was treated like that. But then guess what? On the back end, what they do, they come back and say, yo, that nigga Jay, I love Jay. He did it his own way. Don't give me no compliment, nigga. Because when I was doing it my own way and you ain't agree with it, you was you was the same nigga talking shit about it. I got too personal. I'm sorry. You said their name. Hey, man. Hey, Call him. I could. Have a conversation cool. with him. It's cool, man. I feel like we all, I feel like anybody that got to your space and higher, like we all, they all got them stories, bro. We all got the stories. I, it's just all how we deal with it. Some people speak on it, a lot of people don't. You know what I mean? I, I feel like it's fruitless to give people that energy. So I just be like, whatever. I mean, not saying that I don't get mad every time, you know, from time to time and I have my moments, but like, you know, fuck them niggas. That's the reason why I cherish the people I have around me so much. Is because it's 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 not it's not common to have genuineness. So like when you meet people that are genuine and that are honest, and you know what I'm saying, I, I hold tight to those people. You know because they don't come around every day. You gotta you gotta really embrace and appreciate the real ones that you have in your circle. You know what I mean? That's why I always will, you know, love and and hold on to and answer the phone for the niggas that really be the real shit. So like you know what I mean? Shout out to you. Shout out to uh, all the real stand up men out there, man. <laughs> 